thank you so much for doing this interview with me today. Um, I just wanted to start with, say, an early point in your life, because I know that you went to the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts. Yeah. So I'm curious, are there any skills that you learnt while studying that you always take with you every time you're producing a new project? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. This is cool. Um, yeah, I mean, U USC, USC was incredible um, in a lot of ways. I actually, I didn't do the production track. So I, I chose to do critical studies, which is more like film history and film theory um, and less like hands-on, but I still got to take some production classes. Um, and the thing that I took away the most is USC is super collaborative. So even in your, even in the introduction to production classes where every student has to make their own short film and, and you, you really have to like fulfill all the roles, um, like the idea is that you're, you're getting to, to try your hand at, at writing, directing, editing, all of it. But they would encourage you to like team up and, you know, come over and like gaff for someone or light for someone. And that kind of like encouragement of collaboration is something that I, I've since realized like not all film schools really encourage. And so that was really great because first of all, you just connect with so many people through that. And it's it just, it's so cliche, but filmmaking is so collaborative. It's really, it takes a whole village. And so that, that like spirit, <clears throat> I definitely took away from USC and I, I made connections there, you know, that have become lifelong. I met Seb there, I met Anish through USC. Um, so yeah, just collaboration and, and you, you really take, you, you really, in the best case scenario, you meet the people you're gonna work with. Collaboration is so important as I've had with working on stuff today. I'm working with the same people as I've, as I've done on other projects. So yeah, it's, it's really important. I'm quite curious, I know you mentioned a niche there. I know you've yeah. worked with Sev and Anish more than once on things like the intervention, searching and run. So what's the yeah. most enjoyable aspect of working with them? Oh man, there it, it's just it's just a good time. Like it we all we all first of all I think just enjoy similar types of films. So there's a shorthand there. I mean the first time I met the the way I met Sev and the way I got connected to Niche was so Sev and I met, we're both Armenian, we met at a, a networking event. It's very, very nerdy. Um, but he actually the first time we met, he pitched me this story. It's, it was a movie called Animal Heist, and he said, I'm writing it with my writing partner, can I tell you what it's about? And he was like super excited. And he started pitching it to me. And like halfway through, I cut him off in the pitch. And I was like, I know how that story ends. X, Y, Z happens. And he looked at me and he was like, you're exactly right. And now you have to read it. Cause I, cause I basically predicted the whole story. And so like, you know, from the get go, I think we've, we've all had similar, um, similar tastes in movies. And Sev and I are both Armenian and Nish is Indian American, but like, we have similar, um, you know, just cultural backgrounds and family upbringing. So there's really just a shorthand as people and that just translates, you know, into the work. And I, I joke that like every time I do a project outside of them, I miss them and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I wanna work with them again. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, I think it's a shorthand, it's a shared, shared uh, like of movies and, and types of genres and, and all that. And we just, you know, we're, we're I mean, Seven and I are married now, but, like we're just the three of us are friends and i joke that the three of us are in a marriage because we're talking all day long usually yeah i think it's really interesting because i could definitely see you three working together for a very long time a very, that is the plan that is the plan for sure yeah it'd be really good to see uh, what you can do with a diverse range of genres definitely yeah absolutely i'm excited for our next project, probably shouldn't say too much about it, but it's, so we have Searching 2 coming up, um, which is a, not so much a direct sequel to the first one, but um, it, it's another thriller set in this like tech kind of space. And then after that, we have what Anish and Sever kind of ideating and writing right now. It's a heist movie. So I'm really pumped for that because some of my favorite movies are heists. It's like Ocean's Eleven, but set, set in the world of, of immigration. So I'm really pumped for that. Oh, that sounds really good. I cannot wait for Searching 2 and the heist movie. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm curious, as we've having to work in lockdown, how has your, yeah. creative, has your creative thinking changed in any way? So having to adapt virtually, work over things like Zoom, which we never really had to do really until now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting. We have, the three of us, we have a TV project, um, 
together with an amazing author. Uh, it's based on a book and we've been taking it out. We, we started putting together our pitch, I want to say in like the beginning of the year, so before the lockdown, before anyone knew it was coming. And then as soon as we were ready to actually take the thing out and start pitching it, the lockdown happened. So everything became over Zoom. And it was it was interesting because we you, you have to change you know, it's hard to keep people's interest on Zoom. It's very different than being in a room. So we had to adapt the pitch, but also, you know, searching too. The, originally, we were hoping to shoot um, in the summer, the summer here in the States. And obviously, that's not happening. It's not safe to shoot. And so we've very much so adapted on that project in that we're actually going to start with a lot of the, like, animated elements in the movie and, and the screen stuff and kind of put temp video in as a placeholder, which we did on the first movie. We spent, on, on Searching One, we spent seven weeks before pr principal production started, and we had the editors, Will and Nick, in a room editing a movie, but we had no footage. So they were like screen capping the internet and putting together a rough version of the film. And so when the lockdown happened, we thought, well, you know, it's not safe to shoot, but maybe we can edit remotely and, and take that previous period and just like stretch it out for as long as, you know, as long as we need to until it's safe to shoot. So on that one, we've, we've very much adapted, but um, we're, we're lucky in that the project is probably one of the most best suited for these circumstances. Yeah, I, yeah, I really am looking forward to it. Are you going to still fo follow the thriller genre aspect of searching or are you going to do something a bit different? Yeah, it'll definitely, it's definitely a thriller. Definitely someone goes missing. Um, but it's not the same. We're, we're not following the yeah. same thing. It's not the Kim family, but it is set in the same universe. I can say that, I think. Or maybe that's an exclusive. Matt, I think I just gave you an excuse, exclusive. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, due, to, uh, due to like uh, Screen Life movies like Search and becoming a popular thing now, are there any stories in particular you would like to see told in the same type of format as Search? Oh, great question. I mean, I think the cool thing is there's like there there's so many stories that you can tell on it but i think what i hope to see is filmmakers ch choosing the right stories for the screen like you you could you could tell anything on screen because we i mean we're we're living it right now like we're literally doing everything on zoom all day long um but that isn't always interesting like i i you know there's there's so much you can do but i don't think that every story needs to be told on screens so, I mean, yeah, I'd love to see, uh, I think a heist would be really cool through, through screens. Like, what does a remote heist look like if everyone, you know, if, if, if it's told through screens and people aren't necessarily in the same place? I think that'd be really dope. Um, yeah, I don't know. What that that's really interesting, yeah, because you, you, most bank heist movies, you associate with masks, guns, people walking into a bank, but that would be a very different take on the genre, which sounds really interesting. Yeah, like a like a cyber cyber heist or something. Yeah, prove uh, hacking. Yeah. You uh, I, I go back to very early in your career. What was it that made you want to become a film producer in the first place? Because I'm actually an aspiring film producer myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. So I was like one of those kids that growing up, I just knew I wanted to do film, like something in film. At 10, I had a video camera. My dad got me for Christmas and I was just making stuff. And then I actually went to a high school here in LA called Providence High School in, in, in Burbank. And they had a media focus program. So like all, all throughout high school, you're elect, if you were in that program, your electives each year were, were like film and media related. So I was like making short films and, um, and like commercials all throughout high school. And I really loved it. And and in that class, you know, on every project, you know, we would rotate roles. So you'd, you'd direct sometimes, you'd be writing sometimes. And I'd always be doing something like directing or editing and producing and not by choice. Like, I think I did it once, like my freshman year. And then the professor was like, no one ever wanted to produce. And the professor was always like, nah, you're good at it. Like, like you're, you're producing this and this and this. And by the end of high school, I kind of looked around and I was like, I'm actually really good at this. And it feels like no one else really wants to do it. Like everybody wanted to direct and write. And same thing when I got to, to USC, um, to like proper film school. And so at a certain point I was like, I'm really good at it. And it's 
really creative and and challenging logistically. So, you know, there's a demand for it. Why not? Um, so it was more that I think it chose me more than I chose it. If that makes any sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, it's interesting because at college, uh, I really found pulling the team together. I really enjoyed the aspect, and uh, you you really got it. Really, just liked it. Yeah, it's so fun, and I think, and I think, I think people don't realize how um, it gets a bad rap sometimes. You know, like the cliche image is like a guy on the phone like barking at someone or someone signing the checks, and uh, you know, it's so it's so creative at the end of the day, and especially when you have the right partners. So that, that's what I love about it. Yeah, definitely the right partners uh, coming together. You can make just a really great film. And producers, yeah. uh, probably the most important people on a film set, I'd argue. I think so. I mean... <laughs> well, they would put the whole team together. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's important. But, um, yeah, no, I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Uh, I think we'll uh, talk a little bit, a bit about uh, Run now, which unfortunately uh, has been delayed due to the pandemic. I was really looking forward to it. Uh, so well, I'm just curious, were there any inspirations for the film Run? Sorry, were there any what? Uh, inspirations behind the project. Yeah, you know, Anish and Seth, I remember what they, were, they were coming up with the idea while we were still working on searching. So we were, we were in the edit room and kind of at the tail end of that. And it's partially inspired by, you know, real world cases of, um, you know, it's not really a spoiler because I think everyone, everyone knows what it's about, but um, and that's not the main twist of the film, but, you know, uh, these real world cases of, of mothers and children and, and questions about, you know, the, the health of the children and what may or may not have caused it. So there was a lot of like real world cases of it going around and, and then Anisha and Sev just really loved the idea of, you know, this prison break movie starring a daughter and the prison she has to escape is her own home, you know, and the, and the villain is the mother. And like, what does that look like? And then, and the, the idea of like taking someone with a disability and having like action scenes with them. Like we were like, wow, we've never seen that before. And like, how amazing would it be to pull that off? And that's kind of how the seed, seed of it all started. And then they wrote the script and it was just, it's like such a page turner. It's, it's pulse pounding. And the movie, um, which I can't wait for everyone to see when it, when it finally gets to come out is just, it's, re, it's such a ride. It's like, there's a certain point at the movie when like shit gets started. Sorry, I don't know if I want to curse. And it, it just like doesn't stop. And I've, I've seen it probably a hundred times and I still look forward to watching it. Like that, that's how much fun it is. Oh, I can't wait. Sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, especially for the trailer. Sarah Paulson looks terrifying in this movie. Sarah is like amazing. Like it, it was, it was really amazing to, to work with her and, and to see her process. And, and Kira Allen, who is, is a newcomer who plays the daughter is just fantastic and the, the the two of them it's just it's so it's basically the two of them on screen and it's i'm 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 very uh i'm, I'm really proud of the film and i'm excited for people to see it oh no just hopefully uh we can see it at some point because i'm really i'm really looking forward to it i know uh me, my mate at college we've been discussing it a fair bit because we're big fans of searching and it's we've just been coming over our own theories what do you think is going to happen and i just uh <laughs> I think it's gonna. I your theories I, later. I won't yeah. say I won't spoil anything, but you got to tell me all your theories. Yeah, I wish my mate was here. <laughs> I'll talk. I, I, what I, well, one was set to come out May the eighth, so I'm curious: have any changes been made on the production since being in lockdown, or has it remained the exact same as it would have done if it was coming out May the eighth? Yeah, so we actually we got very lucky in that we finished the movie i think literally the week before lockdown began so we were finishing sound and color and all and music and all that stuff so luckily we you know we didn't have to change um anything due, due to the COVID of it all it's really just been the the release pattern um but ho hopefully you guys will be able to see it soon yeah i really do hope so uh who's your favorite producer or biggest inspiration in the film industry ah Good question. You know, people don't ask me that often. It's more like people ask directors, like who, who your favorite 
filmmaker is. Um, I mean, there's a lot that I look up to. I think, I think, you know, he's obviously a big name, but Jerry Bruckheimer is so fascinating in that he's had such a long career and has launched such amazing franchises that are really good. Um, and he made one of my favorite movies of all time, Pirates of the Caribbean. Love it. No shame. I love it so much. Um, so he, he's definitely someone that, you know, and, and there aren't really a lot of producers that people like the average person knows by name. And, and he's, he's been able to create like a brand just around himself and the films he produces, which I think is really interesting. Um, and then, you know, I look at Kathleen Kennedy and I'm, and I'm just like, you know, what a, what a boss, like, you know, worked her way up, got onto big movies, working with amazing filmmakers and is now, you know, managing the biggest franchise of all time. Um, so, so probably, probably those two in terms of like commercial, commercial producers, commercial film producers. Yeah, that's really good. I'd probably say I'm really am a big fan of Christopher Nolan's work as a producer because I think the attention to detail in his films is so immaculate. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's stellar inception and hopefully uh, Tenet at some point. I'm so excited for Tenet. I'm so, I mean, I, it's the right thing to, to keep pushing it, but I'm just like dying to see it. I'm oh so... no. Um, yeah, I'm worried it's going to get delayed again, but te yeah, Tenet's one. It's just the whole aspect of time reversal I'm really looking forward to. Cause it... Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, I think that's literally all my... Uh questions answered so. question i want to ask you a question can i ask you a question uh, oh yeah go for it did you did you see searching in the theaters for the first time or, or did you yeah yes i, guess I uh, remember going to see it with my dad the day it came out okay. it was That's so awesome. it, very busy film i think it was crowded literally but yeah. it was such a as I, as I was walking out i was thinking i've never seen anything really like this and it's just really got my creative mind thinking that's awesome that's super cool and what's what's your um the project you're going to shoot your zoom film can you can you talk about what it's about yeah well, yeah it's going to be called roses red and it's going to cover two very important topics uh, mental health and terrorism we're going to try and link the two together uh, my writing partner's just finished the script and it was a very emotional read it's a page turner in a way i think um, yeah, Zoom's, uh, the Zoom's going to be a therapy session between an army veteran who's got PTSD and uh, a, w a woman who's playing the therapist. And the whole time, I think it's going to be, uh, well, well, the therapist is not who he was expecting. It was a fill-in. So that's going to be, uh, the dialogue is very interesting. It's, and we've got uh, actors who have been in theatre as well. So uh, I think they'll bounce off each other really nicely. Great. That's awesome. I'm excited to see it. You'll have to share it with me. Yeah, I definitely will. Uh, we're actually doing, um, uh, as an exclusive as well, <laughs> <laughs> after we finish this, we're planning to do another two short films on Zoom, which are going to be two different genres. I think ultimately I look at all three of these as very interesting experiments. Mm -hmm. uh, one is going to be a end of the world movie. Oh, cool. On Zoom? That sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, final minutes of uh, four friends' lives. Wow! Kind of at the end, that us words to each other. Is and that the pa pandemic or no? Uh, no, just okay. set normal. And uh, the third one, we haven't really got an idea yet, but uh, we want to do like a one take, thirty minute thriller set in real time on Zoom. I love one take stuff. I love it. Have you seen Have you seen Victoria? I've not seen Victoria. You have to watch it. Oh my god, it's so amazing! It's a it's a one take, so it's like two hour and twenty minute film, and it's it's brilliant. It was on Netflix in the states. I'm not sure about on your side of the globe, but it, it's it's phenomenal. If you're thinking about doing anything one take, you should check it out. I will definitely check that out. And also, like 1917, I know it was made to look like it was one take, yeah. which that. Yeah. You could have told me that was one take because it was seamless. Off, I don't know if you've seen ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. I actually I saw that with my dad. Took my dad to see that one. It was great. Oh, really good that movie. Uh, what's your favorite film this year? You've seen this year. 
You know, this year has been interesting. I think I've seen like two things in theaters, um, but I think my two two favorites, they're very different, but they're tied. Uh, the Invisible Man, I thought was so brilliant. Just such a good thriller, but I love that it had something to say um, just about abuse and, and relationships. And it, it went deeper than just like a, a thrilling movie. Um, and Bad Education, which my friend Mike Mikowski wrote uh, with Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Amazing, they're very different movies, but uh, I've actually seen both of them twice. And yeah, they both blew me away in, in very different ways. But have you seen either or both? I've seen The Invisible Man. Uh, not that, uh, I really love The Invisible Man. I think Elizabeth Moss' performance was outstanding. So good, so good, she's brilliant. And also, I think the director, Lay, uh, his direction, he, I think sometimes with horrors, they're too stereotypical and cliche in terms of predictability. You know what's coming. I just didn't get that with this film. We've got well-written characters, a very good story, and I've got the final act was definitely intense. So good. I, 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 yeah, I saw that in the theatre. I, I took my little sister to see it, and we were just like, we kept looking at each other like, like are you seeing this? Like... Oh, like that, that scene in the restaurant? Oh, yeah, yeah. So good. I haven't, I haven't been, sh like, shocked by a movie moment like that in, in a while. It was so great. Really yeah. well done. Yeah, I remember who I went with. We looked at each other and went, what the hell? <laughs> we looked so unexpected. It's great. I love that. Like, but, you know, that, that's, that's why you go to the theater. It's, like, so fun having that shared experience. And I uh, really do hope yeah. the just yeah, the industry could get itself back on track because even yeah, yeah, just sitting with experiencing magic on the big screen. Yeah, I miss it. I miss it very much. Yeah, I know we've got um we've got Unhinged coming out with Russell Crowe, hopefully. I'm when is that set for? Uh July thirty first, I think in the UK and the States. Yeah. I mean what the have the are the cases there a bit more under control now? Um I think, uh, I don't really know how to describe our government's handling of the <laughs> pandemic, to be honest. I think it's just, there's, it's, it's like writing a movie script and the whole thing's improvised. There's no structure to anything. There's a, uh, my, my friend, uh, a fellow producer, told me a joke. She's like, it feels like a really bad screenwriter is writing 2020 as a disaster movie because there's all these things that keep happening in addition to the pandemic. Um, like you remember the the like the killer bees or or the the flies? There was like all these articles, and then it went away. Like that 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 thread was introduced in the story of twenty twenty, and then it never came back. She's like, it's a really sloppy screenwriter writing this year. I know. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll just end with one more question uh, to any. Um, upcoming filmmakers, uh, aspiring filmmakers like myself and probably a lot of young uh, film enthusiasts who will watch this, uh, what piece of advice can you give to them on just uh, making their break in the industry? Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't feel like I'm someone to give advice, but um, if I had to, I think I would say, like when you're, when you're starting out, take take any opportunity that comes your way and don't, don't be afraid if what you want to do is, is be a, a big action director, but you get the opportunity to direct something that maybe doesn't fall in that genre, but it's an opportunity to direct, take it, you know, um, because you never know where, where things are going to lead. My first job was working on documentaries and I, I like documentaries. That's not necessarily where I wanted to end up, but that job ended up opening so many doors for me and teaching me so many things, introducing me to so many people. So like, you know, what, when there's an opportunity to actually make something or do something, um, just take it. Cause you, you truly don't know where it's going to lead. And you, this is a, a job, any, anything you do in this industry, it's you, you, you learn by doing. So just jump, just jump in and start, you know, go for it. That's very good advice. I think that will leave it there. Thank you very much for this interview. I really hope we can see one at some point this year. I think Me a lot too. of people Definitely. are very Thank looking you. forward to it. Thank you. So, such a pleasure talking to you. And I can't, I seriously can't wait to check out your shorts. Oh, thank you very much indeed. I can't wait to see your upcoming work as well. It sounds very interesting. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And thank you for all the support and, and love 
um, for searching just th through the years. You've been such a big fan. Yeah, yeah. It did get mentioned in my personal statement. Is yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.